Hi, and welcome to this demo of the changes made to the pattern engine in Mark Stinchback 5R3. First off, some good news. The mask shelf presets that are available in the procedural tab now should all be working because some of them were broken because of changes made to the pattern engine in previous extension pack 5 versions. And I guess I didn't test it enough and some of these presets produced a shader compile error. So this should be all fixed now and I apologize that that bug made it through. Now one of the changes in extension pack 5 or 3 to the pattern engine is a unification of outputs of nodes. So previously we had for example the pattern generators and they had a bunch of utility outputs. So for example the pattern UVs, pattern center, index, etc. With 5 or 3 all pattern engine nodes now have consistent outputs. So you can also use for example these platter nodes or the symmetry pattern generators. And you can see all these have the same utility outputs. So you no longer have to use the most expensive version of the pattern generators to only have these utilities. The alpha handling of these utility outputs has also been changed. So here I have a shape splatter and I just splattered a bunch of Gaussian shapes. If I reduce the alpha intensity and take a look at the pattern UVs, you can see the pattern UVs are now outputting by default a completely solid shape. So this is different than it was in previous extension pack versions where the outputs were pre-multiplied with the alpha. To better control this, I've added an output alpha group where you can revert back to this behavior. So if I pre-multiply the shape with the alpha, then I get what I had previously. Now, of course, your previous projects will not change because these nodes have been versioned up. So this behavior will only be uh, visible in newer versions of this node. So when you create a new instance of this node. So here you can see, I can control the alpha separately for the different outputs. And by default, for example, the pattern scale is still using a pre-multiplied version, but the other ones do not use a pre-multiplied version. Now, why is this important? Because for example, for UVs, when you pre-multiply it, you get basically invalid UVs in these half transparent areas. So this would not be very helpful, for example, if you use this to map something to this. So let's just create, for example, an image and I'm going to add a Mari logo here. And if I just plug the pattern UVs in here and view this, you will see I get my Mari logo on each shape. While previously, if the alpha would have been pre-multiplied, I could have gotten like invalid areas of UVs in some areas, which is in this case not really visible because it's a very simple shape. But anyway, there would have been problems in the borders and this way you don't have these problems. Talking about utility outputs, there's a new one that is very important and very powerful, which is the pattern manifold. So the pattern manifold allows you to drive other nodes with, yeah, with the result of this shape splatter in this case. So here we've already seen an example where I just apply an image to each instance of these pattern UVs. Now, if I, for example, use the pattern manifold instead and pipe that into the manifold UVs, you see, I get a solid color per shape because basically the pattern manifold is now acting as the 2D placement node for this image. Now, if I increase the amount of shapes I'm using, I'm getting this Mari logo, but it's consistent and made out of all these little dots that are sampled once per shape. So this gives you a whole new set of options using the pattern engine. Because for example, we can make some really cool effects, rotate things randomly. I can make almost some sort of brush effect, or I can create like an effect where I have these fibers and they make up the Mari logo. Now, if you still want to use the alpha of this Gaussian, you can use the pattern mask and slot it straight into the mask input of the image. And you can see I'm getting the transparency correctly then. Now, this is a very cool example um, where you can see what you can do with this pattern manifold. And obviously, this output exists on all nodes of the pattern engine. I could even go further with this and slot in, for example, a warp node. So this is also a new extension pack 5 or 3 node and slot this in between the output of this node and the input of the image node. So I'm going to slot this into the manifold. 
And if I, for example, create a cloud node and hook this into the warp input, we collapse these nodes so it's a bit tidier. And now in here, if I increase my warp, then you can see I'm getting the warp effect of this cloud node. So you can make very interesting effects this way. Now this example also exists inside of the mask shelf. So if I go to the mask shelf and then just type in 5R3, you can see I have some examples here. So these examples were built for the layer stack, so they are a bit more complex than these simple two node setups. So you can see we have a bunch of merge nodes, but in essence, all you need is these two nodes, which is what I've shown previously. Let's take a quick look at a triplanar setup for this same procedure. So here I have a shape splatter triplanar, and instead of an image node, I'm using an axis projection, and I'm feeding the pattern manifold of the shape splatter into the manifold 3D of the axis projection, and the pattern mask into the projection mask. Let's view the axis projection. And again, I'm using my Mario over here. This looks quite wrong by default because you have to change some settings in the Shape Splatter Triplanner. First off, let's create some more cells. So we have a lot more cells, but you can see I'm still not seeing my Mario logo. Now, because the manifold for this case outputs 3D coordinates, you need to tell the Shape Splatter how big these 3D coordinates should be in world space. For that matter, the Triplanar versions have under the Transform tab a manifold world scale. So if I increase this, and let's set this for example to 50, you can see I'm getting my Mari logos again, and I need to increase the cells further. And then I have, maybe not quite as far, again, my individual dots making up my Mari logo. And the rest is basically the same as before, so you can use other shapes for this. You can even go as far as, for example, use a, I don't know, like a kite shape or something. And again, we can make all the modifications that we want to this. Create some interesting effects this way. So this is a bit different for the Traplana versions than for the 2D versions, because the 2D versions do not have this manifold world scale. Some other changes inside of the splatter nodes or in the uh, in general, the uh, pattern engine nodes. So if I create, for example, a um, splatter node, you can see under the input image, I have now all the different options that are included in other extension pack 5 or 3 nodes, such as the blurring. And you can also uh, have full normal map support for input images. So I have a separate tutorial about that uh, that explains what that is about. Yeah, so these are the main changes to the pattern engine. And you can see resampling images now is basically a very simple solution. So you can really utilize the pattern engine, create complex effects this way.